they t- they prey upon people who lack knowledge in foreign policy, knowledge in history, and ever since that debate and ever since that channel grew, a lot of people who say the things that you say, like how we have to reach out to other people with different ideologies but are still working class, they call us like they call us fascists, they call us Nazis or neo Nazis or Hasbols. What are some things that Vosh was saying that is just not true about our foreign policy or assumptions he was making about our foreign policy or our history that you find well, very concerning? Well, a, a lot of these people use words they don't know what they mean. Okay, when people say the word Nazbol, what is a Nazbol, right? People, some people, I think they think that that means. Most people, you ask them what a Nazbol is, and they think, well, there are these people on the internet who are communists, but they're kind of like Nazis. So they're Nazi Bolsheviks, they're Nazbols. That's not what that word means, okay? That is not what that word means. There was a political party in Russia in the 1990s, and it was dissolved in 2007, and it was called the National Bolshevik Party. And it was a party that mixed Russian nationalism with Marxism. And it was a breakaway from the Russian Communist Party and it dissolved. It no longer exists. Um, I've never been a member of that party. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know anyone who has. Um, the main thinker for that party, from what I understand, was a was a writer, uh, Edward Limonov, who just died. Um, and he wrote novels that had like LGBT characters in it and stuff. Like he was kind of seen as kind of edgy and liberal. Um, and in Russia, the Nazbols were considered to be a left wing party to some degree or other. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. I've never, never met them, never associated with them. They were dissolved when I was 19 years old. But people on the Internet who are sympathetic to opposing imperialism are not Nazbols. Uh, that's just silly. Right. Another word you hear, Strasserist. What is a Strasserist? Right. <laughs> Sounds like well, a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, in the Nazi party. There, were, there, was, there was a faction of people that were followers of a guy named Gregor Strasser. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the night of the Long Knives, Hitler killed all the Strasserites. Uh, and Ernst Rem uh, and you know, you know some of the founding Nazis hated Jewish people with all their heart and soul, killed and murdered communists on the picket line, strike breakers, violent people. But to some degree or other, they believed in like the socialism part of national socialism. They... They wanted Hitler to, like, nationalize the property of the rich or something like that. Well, as Hitler started moving toward coming to power, he realized that, you know, that he needed to make an alliance with all the wealthy German capitalists. So he really, you know, you know watered down what it meant to be a Nazi. Um, and the, the national socialism part just meant as long as corporations are patriotic, it's fine. Um, so, you know, and then after Hitler had been in power for a year, some of the people in his party were still talking you know, the way that Gregor Strasser and Ernst Ram and some others talked, and so he killed them all. Um, I have nothing to do with those people. I don't hate Jews. I don't hate anyone on their na- on the basis of their race or religion. I'm not encouraging people to go out and commit acts of violence in the streets against communists and leftists. So, you know, I got nothing to do with Strasser. Uh, that's, just, that's just a non sequitur. Um, you know, tanky. Well, what is a tanky? Mm. Tanky just means you support existing socialist countries, right? Uh, that, that word goes back to the British Communist Party. Uh, in the 70s, you had the rise of something called Euro communism. 1978, uh, the French Communist Party, the Italian Communist Party, the Spanish Communist Party all signed a document denouncing the Soviet Union. So in Britain, there is a debate. Should we go with the Euro communists or not? Well, the, the, the people who supported the Euro communists, they were called the Euro faction. And the people who supported the Soviet Union were called the tankies. And why is that? Because Soviet military interventions were portrayed on television with tanks, right? It was like a propaganda thing, right? Um, There's a great book called Afghanistan, Washington's Secret War. Um, And it talks, it's it's written by a reporter who was stationed in Kabul, in Afghanistan, at the time the Soviet Union sent its military to support, you know, the government of Afghanistan. And he talked about how, you know, all kinds of Soviet people were sent there. um, But there was one tank in the whole city of Kabul in a park. And that's where all the news media surrounded and pointed their cameras at. All the Western media pointed at this one tank because that is how Soviet military interventions were portrayed on American TV. This is big tanks, right? When the Soviet Union sent soldiers to Czechoslovakia, big tanks. When the Soviet Union sent soldiers to Hungary, big tanks. Soviet Union sent soldiers to Afghanistan, big tanks, right? Uh, Tiananmen, 1989, and China, tanks. And the way that was a very calculated propaganda move by Western imperialism. Because 
uh, you know, they didn't show like the millions of people in Afghanistan who didn't want to live under the Taliban and wanted women to have the right to vote and wanted women not to get acid poured on their faces and liked the idea of the Soviet Union sending aid to like develop their agriculture. They didn't show you the, uh, the millions of people in Czechoslovakia who wanted to keep their guaranteed job and health care and education and didn't want the free market to come ruin the country. They didn't show you the people in Hungary who, who didn't want, you know, neoliberalism and free market reforms. Instead, they made it look like the only the only force, the, the, the force of opposition to the CIA sponsored protesters is just this cold mechanical piece of machinery. It's Darth Vader, you know, rolling over the individual. It was a brilliant propaganda tactic. Because at the end of the day, those tanks from the Soviet Union represented millions of people in every country of the former Eastern Bloc, every single one, Romania, Czechoslovakia, Poland, every single one of those countries, they do poll after poll after poll. People say that life was better before the Soviet Union fell, before the overthrow of communism. So those tanks were not just cold pieces of machinery. They represented millions of people who didn't want communism overthrown. They may have wanted communism to change. They may have wanted communism to be more, more democratic. They may have wanted some more of a market sector. They did not want free market capitalism. And what happened in Eastern Europe in the 1990s when they restored capitalism was a humanitarian crisis. Drug trafficking, sex trafficking. I mean, Russia in the 90s lost 10% of its population. One in 10 people either left the country or died. Uh, they had a food crisis in the country. Um, I mean, it, it was a nightmare, you know. I mean, all the farms shut down pretty much. The factories closed their doors, 30% unemployment. Around all the subways, you had elderly folks, you know, begging, you know, older folks who'd lost their pensions and were like trying to sell you yesterday's newspaper or their old sock. You know, just give me a little bit of money for this old sock so I can, I can, I can go buy some food. I mean, Russia in the 1990s, when they adopted libertarian free market economic policies, was a nightmare. Um, and the restoration of capitalism all across Eastern Europe has been a nightmare. And most of Eastern Europe hasn't recovered from it. Russia, you know, Putin has come in, he's nationalized the oil and gas, and he's been able to kind of reboot the economy. Uh, but, you know, Lithuania, uh, you know, Czechoslovakia, uh, a lot of those places have really suffered. I mean, they have not, you know, recovered. It was the Soviet Union that wiped out illiteracy in those countries, that built hospitals in those countries, that paved the roads in those countries. You know, so, you know, the, the tanky narrative that, oh, you know, the Soviet Union, which is this cold, mechanical piece of machinery crushing the individual, that is a very effective piece of propaganda. But the term, it comes from that divide. So if you're calling someone a tanky, basically you're saying, you're saying if someone's a tanky, they're Angela Davis, right? Angela Davis, right? The great, you know, black freedom fighter. She was a supporter of Eastern European socialism. If someone's a tanky, uh, you're basically saying they're Albert Einstein because he defended the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Someone's a tanky, they're Nelson Mandela, who admired the Soviet Union, admired Fidel Castro, admired North Korea, admired Gaddafi. If someone's a tanky, um, you're saying that they're Helen Keller, who called the Soviet Union the rising star in the East and praised the Soviet Union. Tanky is not an insult as far as I'm concerned. You know, um, you know, I, I do encourage people to admit some of the flaws of socialism as we've seen it, to learn not just from their successes, but from their mistakes. But being someone who is associated with the history of really existing socialism, the movement that defeated the Nazis, the movement that conquered outer space, the movement that raised millions of people out of poverty is nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, you know, it annoys me, these PragerU free market people, they have this yeah. meme that they make and they say, oh, capitalism is great. Look, in, in the last hundred years, this many million people have been raised from poverty. How many of those people have been raised in, in, from poverty by the Chinese Communist Party? Right. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred million raised from poverty by Chinese communism. Who made Russia an industrial superpower? Who built the power plants in Egypt? Egypt didn't have electricity until Abdel Nasser, a socialist, and the Soviet Union teamed up to build the Aswan Dam. Socialism has raised millions of people out of poverty. It's capitalism that keeps countries all over the world in states of chronic poverty and underdevelopment. Right. Um, you know, I mean, look, if 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 countries have to like beg, you know, when I was a kid, I went to church and they would always get up and they'd want us to like donate money so that we we could build a well in an African country. Like there's poor people in some African country. They don't have a well, you know, donate some money. Well, if you keep a country in an economic situation where the people have to beg from Westerners, please give us money so we can get a well. Uh, you're not really helping them. Socialism comes there and it builds it builds a modern water system. And it builds water treatment facilities and it builds power plants and it raises these countries up. We in the West, we keep these countries impoverished. 
the, the free market libertarian policies beat down the, the economies of these countries. And, you know, and then and then, you know, we raise money in our churches to build a well every so often. I mean, this is this is not solidarity. Right. Capitalism is keeping the world poor and socialism is the road to raising all humanity out of poverty.